Ryan talks about receiving death threats from a disturbed user on Facebook because of a Facebook advert he posted that has been used since 2018 that shows his audience how to increase their rental profits. 41,000 people saw this advert, hundreds commented, one replied with a death threat, and then the media decided to run a story on this Facebook advert. Ryan compares this death threat to actually receiving real death threats from nearly a decade ago, when Ryan spent some time in prison for a crime committed by a lifelong friend, and received real death threats from a convicted murderer. Nothing but the truth on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, you'll get nothing but the truth. This offensive and explicit episode covers current issues, trending topics, and more that will punch you in the face with the truth. If you can't handle that, don't listen, because Ryan does not hold back. And if you're up to no good, we're watching. So I've just received a fucking death threat. A death threat from a Facebook-sponsored advert. How can that be possible? I mean, right now, in May 2020, receiving death threats from posting a business-to-business -business advert on fucking Facebook. Let me give you some context. So my company, this particular advert, we're looking for landlords. We're looking for investors that have properties. I'm going to share the advert with you right now, in fact. I'm going to read out the advert that calls somebody to rile all of their troops. They posted it on a fucking renter's union website, which is all one-sided, left-wing renters. An advert targeted to landlords on Facebook. The algorithm went absolutely crazy. It had over 41,000, actually 41,518 people reached in literally 72 hours. 4,940 post engagements. Shit. Over 500 comments. Most of them were fucking negative, which I had to remove because I had hate speech, hate mail, death threats, violence. They were aggressive all because of an advert that I posted on the internet from my company to find more properties, to find landlords who have properties, to do more property deals. I'm going to read the advert out to you in a moment so you guys understand. So you maybe you can make some sense of this. So 41,518 people reached, 4,940 post engagements. My page has gone up by 60,000, sorry, 6,000%. Hold on a minute, six, no, 60,000% the increase of people reached. Seven, oh my God, 70,000% increased in post engagements and 233% more likes. All in the space of just a few days from this one fucking advert. It was a post. I'm going to read it out to you now to see what you guys think. It's a post which was put on Facebook, okay? To find landlords, to find investors, to do deals with them, to help them right now during the pandemic. Now, I understand that this is targeted at landlords, but then tenants, renters, and a fucking renters union... This fucking woman posted it on a renter's union website and linked it with, we're making money out of the NHS. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with the pandemic. This advert was posted originally back in 2018, then again in April 2019, then again in November 2019, then again in December 20 fucking 19. But some bitch has picked up this advert rallied all of her fucking troops, posted it on all of these private groups and Facebook groups and um, renters union, and they have gone mad. They've gone apoplectic. They've been contacting me on Facebook, sending me hate mail, hate speech, death threats from this one particular lady. She put on her own Facebook a screen print of my advert and called all of her troops to burn me. 
She said, go and fucking burn this guy right now. Attack this guy right now. I want you to kill this guy right now. That's me. It was targeted at me. It's unbelievable. Let me read the advert out to you guys now so you can see what you think. If you're a landlord in Brighton, you could be making a big mistake if you're not already shortletting your property. Over the last four years in Brighton, we're getting up to 199% above the market rents on these properties. 985 for studios when the market rent was 650. 1750 for one beds when the market rent was 1100. 3512 for two beds when the market rent was 1750. 3750 for three beds when the market rent was 1800 and 4150 for four beds when the market rent was 1850 per calendar month i covered how we're achieving this in my free ebook below that's it that's the fucking advert that i posted that's the advert there's 275 reactions there's still 420 comments that I left public and I have blocked and removed and hidden and deleted at least 100, maybe even 150 more. So in 72 hours, this advert has literally gone fucking viral. Let me step in real quick. I share a ton of business and investment tactics on this show. And it's a shame that there's no interaction on a platform like this which is why I've created a Facebook community group called Property Crash Course, where I get to answer all of your questions. So you just post a deal or post a question and I'll show you where the money is in your deal or answer your question for you. So help me to help you and your business right now by asking me anything you need help with. Does that sound fair? Just go to Facebook and then search the groups and then type in property crash course. Now, will it turn out to be a bad thing? Will it turn out to be a good thing? Let's look at the pros and the cons. On the good side, we've had multiple landlords reach out and contact us saying these people are crazy. You know, this is out of order what they're saying. There's death threats. Even a landlord, a new potential customer contacted me that never worked with me before and said, I just wanted to share this with you. I understand your business model. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. These people are going crazy. Here's a screen print. It's on their profile here and here saying to go and burn you to all of their friends, all of their followers. So that was a landlord that reached out to me. It's a landlord that we'll probably end up doing some work with, doing some business with. Other landlords have reached out saying similar things. And just interested to find out more. The ebook has been downloaded multiple, multiple, multiple times in those 72 hours. So is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Today I've had the newspaper contact me. The fucking newspaper. The local newspaper which covers this area and Sussex in the southeast. They've contacted me asking me for a comment on the story. The newspaper, because of a post that's gone viral on Facebook. Just imagine that. Is this, a, you know, is this, can it be spun in a way that it's a good thing? Or is it going to be terrible and detrimental? Because what this person is trying to say, not the news, not the press, not the media. This fucking woman who's calling for my death, for me to be burnt. She's telling people that we're making because the advert says we'll increase the rent up to 200%, which is what we've been doing for four consecutive years in this fucking city. It's not new. It's not now for the coronavirus. It's not just for this. It's been happening. We've been doing this for the last four years in multiple different cities. Now, unless Donald Trump got it wrong, where he was saying that the fucking coronavirus came from China around about... December or January 2020 so unless Donald Trump's got it wrong how could we be profiting off the coronavirus when our advert was posted in 2018 then again in 2019 in April 
in November 2019, again in December 2019, and again the advert was refined for right now in May 2020. But it's the exact same advert. In fact, our numbers have gone down. They used to actually be 244% we was increasing the rent by above the market rent with this business model, short letting. Right now it's 199% because the numbers and the market has changed. So it's actually, in fact, less. But this is nothing new to us. This has been going, we've been doing this for four years in the same city, in multiple cities. But this fucking bitch, who looks like a crackhead, has picked up this advert and used it in a very negative way, trying to say we're making money off the NHS. It's got nothing to do with the NHS. I don't know how the fuck she even thought of linking it to the NHS. She's just some poor bitch that will never amount to anything. And she looks like a fucking crackhead as well. We've had to report her to the police for making death threats from a fucking Facebook ad. We've had to report her to the police. It's just unbelievable. So will it turn out to be a good thing? Will it turn out to be a bad thing? I think right now, in the eyes of a tenant seeing this, it's a bad thing. We knew that before. I knew that last year. I knew it before the advert was posted. I knew it in 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 2020 when it was posted. That tenants obviously won't like this because it's not for tenants where B2B is business to landlords, to investors, to consortiums, to, you know, landlords that have large portfolios, companies, we take over their properties and we increase the rent by taking them out of one market and putting them into a brand new fucking market. Make sure you've subscribed because tomorrow you'll get Show Me The Money On Wednesday. If you have a deal right now and you don't know the best way to structure it, if you post a deal in the community group on Facebook called Property Crash Course, Ryan will help you unlock hidden profits and save you from locking yourself into a loss on those bad deals that every property sourcer wants you to buy. It's got nothing to do with tenants. We don't rent to tenants. But for some reason, this crazy crackhead has tried to make out that we're making money from tenants. We're making money from NHS workers, sorry, right now, which we're not. Absolutely not. We're like a hotel. We're offering corporate relocations, but fuck. One post on Facebook can go viral in a few days. It didn't even cost me any more than a two-figure sum to get 41,558 people reached, 4,940 post engagements on the page. Massive, over 550 comments in less than 72 hours. So the marketing's working, the marketing wheel is working, the algorithm is working, fuck, that's a good thing. Massive, massive PR, but is it gonna backfire? Is it going to turn out to be a problem? The fucking newspaper have contacted me, like I just said, to run a story. I've spoken to the news desk today to give them a formal statement. Now, will they publish it in a good way? Will they publish it in a bad, negative way? Or will they actually look properly on the same page where the advert is and go back and see the same advert in May 2020 right now? In, no, in December 2019, the same advert. And then in November 2019, and then in April 2019, and then all throughout 2018, across the span of two years, will they go back and actually see that? Because if they don't, I'll be demanding a fucking public apology from them. Because if they post some bad negative shit, trying to say that we're making money off the NHS, which we're not, then I'll be demanding a public reply, a public apology from the paper if they don't just click back on our page and have a look for themselves and see that this is an old advert. Our business model has been the same for the last four years. It's got nothing to do with the fucking pandemic right now. But death threats, that shit's just not right. That's just not right. I mean... 
I'll be okay sleeping at night knowing that I had death threats because something that lots of you guys will know about me. If you've listened to this podcast from the start, I've been completely open and transparent. I spent some time in prison for a crime that was committed by a lifelong friend of mine, not me. I spent time in a prison, a horrible, horrendous prison, prisons, ACAT prisons, BCAT, CCAT, DCAT, all the way down from the maximum security prisons with some, it gives me goosebumps now just thinking about it, proper, real serial killers, not people that have pretended to kill someone or threatened to kill someone, actual serial killers. And actual murderers that have murdered people. And I had problems with some of these people. They didn't like me. I stood out like a fucking sore thumb. A fucking businessman. In jail. With fucking murderers. I stood out like a sore thumb. I was literally a target in there. Because I looked different. I talked different. I come from a different background. Not from this criminal life that they led or they live. So I stood out like a sore thumb, so I was a target, and I still managed to survive in that environment. I still managed to sit at the same table and be confronted by these real killers, murderers, and my hand would still not even shake when they were putting the pressure on and intimidating you and having problems with you, etc., in prison with real murderers. So when I look at this and think I've got a death threat from a keyboard cowboy, a warrior, a keyboard warrior, you know, somebody who hides behind a keyboard and posts it on their social media that they want me dead, they want to burn me, do you really think that that bothers me? Do you really think that that keeps me awake at night? Because I've actually lived through the real environment, the cold, hard truth of actually people who've killed people and threatening to kill me as well in prison. So no, I can still sleep at night. It's still not right. It's just not right anyway. I mean, fuck. It was a fucking, it's supposed to be a good thing to do good things for landlords, do good things for investors, do good things for property owners, to show them how to increase their rent right now, especially with the war against landlords. So most landlords love the content we put out. They love the information. They love the hacks. They love the tactics. They love the strategies. They love the fact that they can short let and earn more money from their exact same property by following my tactics but when it comes to the tenants they've just completely taken and blown this out of proportion so this is just me just talking to the mic talking to you guys sharing some truths about some you know some some real things that are happening right now death threats the the media the local paper calling me contacting my office wanting a a, a reply to the story they're going to publish something negative unless we reply or they're still going to publish something negative anyway i mean fuck is it too early to market is it too early to be in business is it too early to open the doors because of the coronavirus it's affecting people everywhere all over the world is it really too early to advertise about profit about making money right now. Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. He's a number one Amazon bestseller. He's an NLP manipulator. He's a property core seller. He's a Lamborghini driving multi-millionaire property guru. Forget that same old boring I am me, 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 narcissistic podcast format because nobody gives a f. This podcast is all about you. So I'm taking these few seconds to thank you for subscribing, to thank you for leaving your five star reviews, and thank you for sharing this show with all of your friends. My team and I will keep bringing you these episodes and answering all of your burning questions in my Facebook community group called Property Crash Course. If you can just keep telling all of your friends about this show.